Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Attack of the Clones video, a series in which I take a look at clones that are supposedly one-to-one -one replicas of the real deal but with mixed results, as you have all seen in the last three videos or so. This series is for phones that only run Android, the phone archive is for the more obscure and strange clones, as well as retrospectives on older devices. Finally, we have arrived at the last installment of this little series. This is just the bonus video. I was going to do a review on the Goo Phone 6, but I think I'll leave that for now. But before we continue on, just a reminder that my in-depth videos go for so long that they have timestamps or chapters as YouTube has called them that are left in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be if you want to skip to the end see the teardown or see how bad iOS and I say iOS is on this thing then all is listed in the timestamps so if you need to use them feel free to do so. Also applications to check your phone for any fake specifications as well as the files pulled from this phone are down in the description. Once again I don't endorse the purchasing of replica or knockoff products just showcasing these things off for entertainment purposes and all that sort of thing. Unsurprisingly this phone came from none other than cash converters more on that soon. Now my last three videos have just been all about goo phones but if you somehow have missed them I'll cart them up here if you want to. Here somewhere. There you go. If you want to watch them all feel free you don't have to it's just there if you're curious. So we've taken a look at all of the goo phone i7s now it's time to finally take a look at the goo phone i6s which is a clone of the Apple iPhone 6s which was released in September 2015 discontinued in September 2018 and originally cost $1,229 for a 64 gigabyte model here in Australia which is somewhere in the neighborhood of about $1,600 or so in 2022 pricing. 224 million units sold worldwide between the 6s and the 6s Plus, which is quite a lot of phones. Also, while talking about that, the specifications are shown on screen for this device, so if you need to pause to read these, feel free. But this is the first iPhone to have the 3D Touch, which was pretty cool, but it's basically just an upgraded version of the iPhone 6 with the better aluminium build, so it doesn't bend like the 6 did. Now, I have done a video on this many, many years ago, and it goes for 12 minutes. For me, that is something you will likely never see again, but if you want to watch that, you just have to search for it. But that's pretty much just going to be a quick version of this video, but I want to actually go back to this and test it out properly and see if it's a decent clone or not. And I can give you a slight hint at this point. It's not that good, but we'll get into that. And yes, this was another cash converters purchase back in early 2018. They thought it was the real deal, and unfortunately, it's just another Goo phone. Not sure how much I paid for this, but I'm fairly sure it was less than 50 bucks. Anyways, let's take a look around the real success and the Goo Phone 6S and see how close they came to making it one-to-one. -one. Starting with the cameras just there on the real deal and the True Tone LED flash and then moving on to the clone, you can see the pretty low-res camera stuck in there like so, as well as the two LEDs that you can clearly see right there, which we'll test during the review. And we've got the kill switch on the back of the Goo Phone as well. The Apple logo on the real deal looks a little something like that, nice and shiny. And the Goo Phone Apple logo looks a little something like that nice and shiny. It's quite flush with the back case, so that's good. They're taking a look at the iPhone 6S text just there, and on to the fake one. They're pretty close. As for the actual placement on the Goo Phone, it's a little bit that away. The iPhone text looks a little bit bigger, and the certifications and stuff... Uh, they're about the same, I'd say. A1688 and A1688 on that one. Now you're going to start to see some condition issues around the Goo Phone because I've taken this apart so many times and I've just broken the casing, but that's okay. Real deal at the bottom, Goo Phone at the top. I've got the mute switch, volume buttons. We've got the antenna bands, which I've kind of broken on the Goo Phone. And then moving around, we have the headphone jack, hole for a microphone, the lightning port, two pentalobe screws, and the speaker grills. No mesh on the Goo Phone like on the real deal. On the other side, we've got the SIM tray and the power button. And in terms of thickness, the Goo Phone is ever so slow thicker, which showing the bottom again, you might be able to tell the difference just there. Also, the lightning port on the Goo Phone is more centered, whereas on the real deal, it's more towards the bottom. At the top, we've got absolutely nothing. And then finally, onto the front of them. Here they are side by side. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a white and gold iPhone 6S. I've kind of only got this space gray iCloud Lock 6S, so it's going to have to do. Now, as for screen sizes, the Goo Phone has a slightly smaller display, but everything else is pretty much in the right place. The home button is a little bit further up than it is on the real deal. We've got the front facing camera, the speaker, and then the Goo Phone looks a little something like that. It's just a little blue dot for the sensor, but that's got nothing under it. Yeah, you can see the damage that I've caused to this thing. It's because when I first got this phone, I had no idea how to pull it apart, and I'll show you how to pull it apart later on in the video. But otherwise, that's the real deal versus the Goo Phone, so I think you get a rough idea of what's going on. So let's move on to having a look at this one and see how we go. Now I've got a 16 gigabyte micro SD card in here with all of my applications and stuff, so we'll be able to test all of them. All right, well, it's time to power up the Goo Phone i6s and test it all out and see if it's a good clone. It's not really that good, but you'll see very soon how good it is. So there we go. At least the boot logo is correct this time. The boot logo color is actually correct for this and it's vibrated. So we've almost booted, almost there, getting there. 
we've booted up. And the first thing I see is invalid IMEI. I have a feeling that we won't be able to test any phone calls on this. So this is the fourth Goo phone I've had a look at in a row. The first one is the only one that was able to receive calls. I'll try give it a call later on and see how it goes. Otherwise we slide to unlock. Man, I miss that. And here we are. Going in for a close up of the display, the display seems to be the same as the one that was used on the Goo Phone i7 slightly higher quality, but the colors aren't too bad and it does look fairly sharp, but nothing like the real deal of course. Also I did factory reset this and there was no setup that popped up, but maybe using the secret codes application we might be able to find setup. All right, demonstrating 3D touch on this looks a little something like this. doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, they didn't implement a fake 3D touch. I thought they would have at least had the menu pop up, but nope, instead we just have jiggly icons instead. As for the buttons, typical Android there, but it does say ringer this time, unlike the previous one that said ringtones. Mute switch does work. See? It's just kind of a bit stuck in there because of the casing being damaged, but it does work. And then locking it, there's the noise, and then there you go. Now, I don't recall what this is called, but when you used to be able to just press the home button twice and the screen would just go, zoop, it's probably for two apps showing at the same time on the display. But for this, you can just press over there like so and it does it. You don't actually press on the home button because there's no components built into this home button. Also, one thing I do want to show you is when you plug in a USB cable, this is what happens. iTunes, recovery mode. <laughs> open USB storage, and also seeing this, you might be able to work out what version of Android this is running already. Swapping up, we do have all the icons and stuff, looking very iOS 9, which is what this claims to have. We'll try the torch quickly. Yeah, that's not too bad, to be honest. Clock looks a little something like that, and the bottom of the touch is also a little bit finicky. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Swiping down shows notifications, calendar. Oh, stocks, we've got <laughs> Apple, Google, and Yahoo, and Doojoo. Oh boy. But on the flip side, Apple and Goog seem to be doing all right. Yoohoo, on the other hand, just can't quite compete with Dow J. If we go show all, it's just a picture, I would say. Notifications is... That was a very slow animation. Oh, there we go. Notifications. So we've got app permission just there. And then swiping to the left, it just shows Siri suggestions, which... Whoa, that actually opened up the phone. Wow. And if we open up gas because gas prices are ridiculous, or petrol prices as we say here in Australia. Uh, does it open up maps? I think it's open up maps, Google Maps, most likely. I don't have Wi-Fi, we need to put that on. And we've also got the accessibility icon just sort of floating around like so, which has notification center, device control center, Siri, and home. I'll show you what Siri does. Default applications are messages, calendar, photos, camera, weather, clock, maps, videos, wallet, notes, reminders, stocks, iTunes store, app store, iBook, health, settings, phone, mail, Safari, music, FaceTime, calculator, podcast, watch, game center, extra has, compass, tips, voice memos, contacts, find friends, find iPhone, file manager, which is a Vex file manager. We've got Go Keyboard and Downloads, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Gmail, and Local App. And the ones that I've installed are CPU system info, device info hardware, secret codes, and GTA 3. And that's all our applications. So just quickly, let's see if we can see the IMEI on here. Okay, there's the IMEI there. I know there's a little setting where you dial a code into the phone dialer. It brings up a setting and you can rewrite the IMEI. So something's probably happened along the way and that's the reason why that's happening. I think I could be wrong, but I'll give it a call and just see what happens. Nope, unfortunately doesn't receive calls. So yeah, I'd have to open up the setting to rewrite the IMEI. Without being able to check the call quality, I could say the earpiece will just be another one of those. Run of the mill ones, nothing special. And the microphone, well, when we get to the camera test, you'll hear the quality of that. Jumping straight into settings though, does the text look ever so slightly off? It looks completely off, but they tried, A for effort. Let's have a look at the keyboard, which looks a little something like that. Very iOS looking. Doesn't sound like iOS. I also failed to mention on the other Goo phones if they were able to pick up five gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. That's not the case. They're all just 2.4 gigahertz, which is honestly to be expected. God, this is annoying. Shut up. We are connected to Wi-Fi, so Bluetooth, cellular. I'll just check this quickly. Enable 4G. And if I choose cellular data network, I think I can maybe pick, oh yeah, there you go. Telstra GSM and WCDMA, so 2G and 3G this is. Just to double check that. There you go, 2G and 3G. Also something that is implemented is this. It kind of works sometimes and other times it doesn't. Notifications, no spaces. Once again, everything's just all bunched together. Might set off just a few red flags. Control center looks a little something like this. You may have to pause the video when I'm in these menus, just in case there are some funny spelling mistakes that I might happen to miss. In do not disturb, we've got manual, scheduled, and all that sort of thing. I don't see any spelling mistakes, so everything's looking kind of normal at this stage. General, about, 
Here we go, device name iPhone 6S, yes it is. Uh, we have one song, eight videos, 23 photos, 55.4 gigabytes is the capacity, so supposedly 64 gigabytes with 49.63 gigabytes free, version is 9.2, we've got the model, serial number, IMEI and all that sort of stuff there, feel free to tell me where they're pinched from, if this is actually pinched from an iPhone 6S or probably a 6, I'd say probably a 6. I'll just check on legal, oh, legal is literally just they didn't even bother to put the whole JPEG in. They just cut it off and went, yeah, it's fine. No one's going to read that. Software update. We're up to date. iOS 9.0.2. Hang on a second. 9.0.2? No, we're on 9.2. You silly thing. We've got Siri, which at the moment, hold the home button to start speaking to Siri. So if we just hold the home button... Apple disclaimer, you hereby acknowledge and agree that any application that is included herein and any services and contents provided to you through such application are being provided to you by a third party service provider and not by Apple Electronics. I guess we just agree with that? Yes, agree. Okay, what, what are we opening? What have we opened? Oh, hello. Siri is a function that enables you to perform various tasks simply by speaking. Okay, say what you want after the beep. You can hear voice feedback when you enable voice prompt. This is just voice prompt off Android that they've rebranded as Siri, isn't it? You can say hi Siri when in Siri or a locked screen to automatically wake up Siri. Okay, or you can choose your own word or phrase to say. Oh, can we actually change that? Unfortunately, Siri has stopped. Well, that was sad. You can edit what you said by tapping on your last speech. All right, so we've got some Samsung icons just there. Twitter update, why do humans live so far north? I don't know, why do they? What's the weather today? What's the weather today? Network connection. Connect to networks and try again. Hi Siri. Of course that wouldn't work. What does this do? Nothing. What do you do? Nothing. Can I tap on that? Nope. That likely doesn't work at all. So if we actually switch Siri on, what does it do now? No network connection. Connect. Okay, it does that. Spotlight search. Looks a little something like this. Ooh, bouncy effect as well. Ooh, we've got Bing web results. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Can't go to spotlight suggestions. Handoff and suggested apps. Looks a little something like this. CarPlay is just a picture. Oh no, no. Yes it is, it's just another picture. Press and hold the voice control button on your, steer on your steering's wheel to start CarPlay setup. They tried. Accessibility has location services, 3D touch, assistive touch, all that stuff. We're gonna turn assistive touch off. 3D touch is on, but it just doesn't work. So if you, wait a sec, whoa. They actually implemented this. But obviously no matter how hard you push on the screen, it's exactly the same result. We've got applications up next. So these are all the apps that are installed on the phone, which are displayed all here. We've got 1.2 gig used and 2.3 gigabytes free of internal storage. I think that's incorrect. I don't think there's four gigabytes of internal memory, but we'll get to that later on. But I'll scroll through here and see if there's any dodgy applications. Is Cheeky Android here? There he is. Good to see you, buddy. Drag item. Okay, that's the first. Free music download. Oh, that's legit. Go keyboard, Google account manager, Google Play services. Uh, iBook, iOS, something or other, lock screen, magic, smoke wallpapers, micro hand app, okie dokie, uh, phone, Picasa uploader, Samsung, <laughs> no worries, setting, setting storage, jelly bean, yay, oh series its own app as well, uh, of course it is, and that is it for the default applications, also the lag going on man, developer settings, looks a little something like this, USB debugging's on, I was going to put the window animation scale down, but I think I'll just leave it for the true experience of this device. So this is what storage looks like, so we've got APK installer, preferred install location, and then for the phone storage is 64 gig and the SD card is 64 gig, but my SD card is 16 gigabytes, so it's incorrect in both those departments, but otherwise it's looking very Android there, so we'll go back, oh see, goes back. Storage and iCloud usage, We've got more available there. That makes complete sense. Data usage. Ooh, that's looking a little bit Android-like. USB computer connection. Yep, that's definitely Android. Of course it is. If you're still wondering, why do they make Goo phones? It's pretty much just to copy the look and somewhat of the general functionality of the real deal. If you start to go in-depth with it, you'll find things that are wrong straight away. But if you just take a quick glance at this, you may be fooled very quickly. Also, watch the battery percentage during this video. I've only been filming for 40 minutes and we're quarter of the way drained. High hopes for this one. Restrictions... Okay, date and time, keyboard, can we change the keyboard? Oh, there you go. So we've got Go Keyboard, iOS Keyboard. So that's iOS Keyboard settings there. iOS Keyboard is selected, so we'll just leave that. Regulatory. Oh, just another picture, but it's a big picture. Well done. So now we can go to Display and Brightness, which has Automatic Brightness, View. Can we change that? Oh, 
Yes, we can. Font size, auto rotate screen and sleep. Wallpaper, here we go. Choose a new wallpaper. So live wallpapers is just the default Android ones. The actual wallpapers are pinched off the iPhone 6S, I assume. And live wallpapers, I wonder if this will work. So we'll do perspective. Does it work? Oh, wait a second. It moves. Can you see it moving? At least they implemented that. Let me try and set another one. I'll set it to live photo this time. Nope, unfortunately that doesn't work. But at least the perspective one kind of worked. Sounds, what do we have in here? On the hunt, 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 on the hunt. What does on the hunt sound like then? Fair enough. Sherwood Forest? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they probably have chucked on a few extra ringtones, but feel free to go through the system files and tell me what you find. Opening sounds like... Oh. Low quality. Low quality, compressed, really nice. Touch ID and passcode. So if we just add a fingerprint, so if we just tap over here like so, that's completely fine. No problems whatsoever. So just keep going, there we go, just continue. Yep, just make sure you're doing that correct. Okay, good, all right. Well, we'll just set a passcode of one, 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 and that's it. You've added a fingerprint. What does it look like? So if we slide to unlock, Beautiful. Battery is stuff all and very Android looking there. In privacy, we've got a bunch of stuff there. iCloud, we have example at iCloud.com, password require. So if we go forgot login, get a free Apple ID. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Someone said just type in some fake details and see what happens. So I'll just type in uh, uh, something. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That's your answer. It doesn't do anything. With just a random ass iCloud and just a random password and click login, it does nothing. So we found out what that does, although I wouldn't trust this. Apps and iTunes store, sign in, which is gonna show us nothing. Create a new Apple ID, nothing. Going back, email, contacts, and calendar. Looks a little something like this. There's not a lot of spelling mistakes on this one, which is kind of good. Unless I'm missing stuff, but I'll keep going. Reminders. Alrighty, phone looks a little something like that. Messages looks a little something like that. FaceTime looks like that. Maps looks like so. Compass, use True North. There it is there, which is actually on the real deal as well. I thought it wasn't, but it is. Safari looks a little something like this. Also Safari. Music, oh, home sharing. Can't sign into that. Videos, can't do much here. Photos and camera. HDR blends the best parts of three separable. Separable what? Save the normally exposed photo and add. Okay. iBooks. Acknowledgements. Oof. Oh, no, nothing there. Podcasts. There you go. Game Center. Apple ID. Password. Sign in. Forgotten. Apple ID. Nothing's going to work. Twitter, Facebook, and all that sort of stuff. I'll try Nike plus iPod. What does that do? Nothing at all. There you go. That's everything in settings. Apart from the text and settings being a bit off and some inconsistencies, it wasn't all that bad. And the general performance of this so far is still fairly snappy for what it is. But don't get your hopes up for this being an excellent clone. But anyways, we'll continue on. Messages, looks a little something like this. Calendar, looks a little something like that. Photos, has photos that I've taken from one of the other previous Goo phones on here. Start sharing on iCloud, that's not gonna do anything. And pictures, same thing. And then if we open up camera, here it is, the camera. Now autofocus does this, it zooms in, and it just keeps on zooming in, but autofocus doesn't work. HDR doesn't work, even though you can click it and it says auto open and close. Even though I left it as auto for most of the time, I did try and use open and it doesn't seem to do much. Live is just a toggle and won't do anything. Timer actually does work. And you've got a bunch of filters down here. If you want to apply them to your photos, you can. Now beforehand, I mentioned about the bottom of the touch being really iffy. This could be the touch screen being iffy or it could be just the iOS skin they've laid onto everything, but it's really difficult to go to the next option to choose video. So even if you do that and slide and stuff. 
it just kind of doesn't work. You could sit here for a while doing this. And the worst part about this was I was doing the camera test while it was raining, which was very, very smart. And oh, there you go, finally worked. And while there was water on the screen, I was trying to frantically go to video and I couldn't do it. So it is a bit finicky, but as you can see, it does kick in. And then switching to the front camera looks a little something like this, which a lot of it's kind of cut off. Now I did notice this before I'd done the camera test, so I did take it apart. I readjusted the camera and it's still exactly the same. So the front camera is gonna look crap. But regardless, I'll show you the photos and videos that I took with this while it was raining and fairly cold. And we'll continue on having a look at this Goofone i6s, which is very meh at this point in time. And testing the rear camera quality of the Goofone 6S. This is what it looks like, and we've got no autofocus, no nothing, and everything just looks depressing because <laughs> it's raining and uh, everything is just all bleh. That makes sense. Uh, yep, that's what everything is looking like. Three Muppets look very desaturated, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Uh, yeah, they don't look good at all. Yeah, it's been raining all day, and I've picked the worst time to do a camera test, right when it's just pouring down rain. But, you know what, I'm doing it to just get it out of the way and it's done. Oh god, look at Stuart, he's just pale and dead. Fair. No lemons today, nothing at all, and the faraway aircon looks a little something like that. There you go, that's what that looks like. And yeah, do you want to see what the sky looks like? See? Absolutely terrible. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the front camera quality and go from there. Night mode doesn't activate the LED flash. That's interesting. It's still raining pretty badly, but I'm testing the video quality of the Goofone 6S, and this is what it looks like. We've got jelly movement, we've got something going on there. Uh, yeah, it's just slightly raining, ever so slightly, but um, that's what it looks like, and it reckons it's just got continuous autofocus. Probably because there's water on the screen. That may help. And there you go, that's the photos and videos I took with the Goofone i6s, and supposedly 5 megapixel front and 5 megapixel rear with no autofocus, and 640x480 video. Nothing too spectacular, I would say the cameras are more likely 0.3 megapixels and 2 megapixels, but it interpolated to 5 megapixels, but we'll check when we take it apart and have a look at the codes on there. Continuing on, we've got weather up next, we'll just do current location, and we'll go back. Yahoo says, sorry weather information is not available. He's crying, poor little cloud. Weather copyright flicker, can we add? Oh yeah, we can, okay. Alrighty, so this is actually the Yahoo weather app that they've put on here. Makes sense. Clock looks like a clock, we've been through that. Maps is gonna find my location. No, nah, I don't think that's gonna work. Videos, with all of the previous videos that I've taken on another Goo phone, the photos and videos that I did take with this, I've already taken off the phone anyways, but you've already seen the camera test. No point playing it on this display. Hopefully we can do the YouTube test though. We'll see. Wallet looks like this. Is it actually a picture? It's a picture, isn't it? It's a picture. Notes looks like notes. If we do a new note, there it is there. Now, if you kind of just quickly glance like that, and then away, it looks like an iPhone. And then if I press the home button, and you go like this, and like that, Quickly glance at it, take it away, looks like an iPhone. So I'll give them that. Reminders looks a little something like this. I was praising it on how somewhat legit it kind of looks and then I just see this big bar up the top there, takes it away completely. How's the stock market doing? The fuck is this? Oh, it's actually something. Hello, search, symbol code or description, filter, watch, screen, 
Okay, uh, watch, my watch list. All right. Oh, hello, it's a fee calculator. So it is a stock app, but not stocks as in opening up stocks to see stocks. It's for managing your own stocks. That makes sense. iTunes store. That looks, yes, that is absolutely 100% legit. Okay, let's just type in Mick Gordon and search. Searching, please wait. This app needs something. What did it say there? Hang on. Well, oh, I have to pause there and see what it says. I'll have to read that during editing. Uh, library, all songs, there's BFG Division. We won't get to that just yet because we've got downloading task and about is, oh, the songs and lyrics are saved in the folder of SD card music download. But I just searched for Mick Gordon on this app and it didn't come up with anything. Okay. The app needs a stable network to connect search engine. If your search failed or cannot get full song, please check your mobile's network Wi-Fi is recommended. Your rating is important to developer and low rate will make developer feel frustrated. Touch here to rate this app five stars. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. What does the App Store look like? Is it just the Play Store? Oh, no, we've got the uh, fake App Store here. Charts shows nothing. This would just be a thing where you can press these and it shows absolutely nothing, I would say. This app does nothing except show pictures and some stuff that you can actually click on. No, no, it does actually show some stuff in here. There you go. So basically what the App Store is is an application manager, nothing else. They could have put the picture up a little bit, but... It's fine where it is. iBook is, okay, old deco, alrighty. Hello, how you doing? Dismiss, The Art of War. There's actual, oh, there's free books on here? Oh, hello, yeah, this is, there's free books on here. Yes, there is. So it's an ebook reader that they've actually put free books on. Uh, that'll be in the system files, but you've also got the Invisible Man on there. I'm pretty sure that's not breaching any copyright stuff, is it? No, oh, yep. That's the Invisible Man right here. Nice. Health is going to look a little something like this. You can do stuff. Application. None. Uh, vitals. Blood pressure. No data. Source. Medical ID. Create medical ID. Okay. It half works. When I say half works, it doesn't really do much. Phone we've already been to, but I'll just quickly check. Recents. Favorites. Contacts. Oh, there we go. That's all the SIM contacts. Mail is, oh, you can actually put stuff in. Windows Live Hotmail. Oh, it's just all the same things, I think. So opening up Safari, there we go. We've got application, game, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Yahoo, Tumblr, and Amazon. We'll go straight to YouTube. And there's YouTube. Okay, will this actually play the Costa Rica video? How many have played them so far? Watch the cat. Ooh, Kiwi. This is a good sign. We'll just pause it if we can. Pause, my dude. Set to 720p. So this is what it looks like in 720p. Once again, the display is not too bad. But it's definitely not 720p. I can tell you that. It's pretty much stuck on 360p. I can see the compression. It's, uh, it's not good. But at least it's smooth. 360p YouTube. There you go. Oh. Don't know what just happened there. Oh. The mute switch is broken, I think. Yep. Even though that wasn't in 720p, at least I still got to show it. Just trying general functionality with the browser. I'll just type in iPhone 6S and press enter. And we'll see if it actually shows. Okay, yes, it does work. Trying to load some JPEGs going. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. There you go. How fast does GSM Arena open? Whereabouts is it? There it is, right there. All right, Let's see how fast it opens. You can do it. You can do it. There you go. Two gigabytes of RAM on the real deal. How much do you reckon's on this? Quarter of that. Music is up next. What does this look like? Playlists, artists, is performers. Same thing. Music, songs, albums. Yep, that's about it. All right, speaker test. It's up as loud as it can get. So this is what it is. It's quiet, it's shit, it doesn't sound good. That's about it. Hey, that rhymed. 
95.7 though. Out of all the goof phones I've looked at, I think this is the quietest. I don't know which is the loudest though. But anyways, continuing on. FaceTime, is it gonna show us the nest and bees and, oh no, it's just this. Wonder what happens if you did try and call someone with this. I mean, trying to use a camera that's looking a little something like that's not gonna be good. Calculator looks like a calculator, nothing to note there. Podcasts is FM radio. Plug in some headphones, there we go. Let's see what's on Australian radio on a Tuesday night at 9.55 p.m. And that is the quality of the FM radio. Watch looks a little something like this. Ooh, look how sophisticated the animation is though. All right, start pairing. Oh, yep, this is another picture. Oh, hello. But these are just all pictures and App Store is just a picture. All the usual stuff we'd expect from a Goo phone. Game Center looks like Game Center. Oh, it needs me to log in. That's probably a shortcut to the Play Store most likely. Extra is we've got a compass that probably doesn't Wait, it actually works? North is that way. All right, so if we go that way. No, 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 well, not north is that way now. Okay, so if you go this way, north is that yeah, All right, that doesn't work. That's definitely using the accelerometer and nothing else. Oh, did it flash green? It did. There it gets level. Tips is pictures. Yay. I'm completely losing all faith in these Goo phones, to be honest. This is why I've made the decision not to look at the Goo phone 6, which looks a little something like that if you were curious. It's not in the best condition at all, and the actual LCD is damaged. I have to use screen copy to show this clone off properly, and since this will be the fourth Goo phone in a row that I've had a look at, I really want to take a break from them and do something else. So this is the last Goo phone you'll see for a while, but you won't be missing much. Voice memos just looks a little something like that. They're all the same, just pictures and an iOS skin that's kind of half-assed. This iOS skin isn't too bad, I will say that. Signed to iCloud, picture, find friends, picture. I take that back, it is not a picture. Okay, let's just type in stuff. You can type in stuff, but you can't do anything past that. Yeah, no. Okay, file manager is just the default Android file manager. 64 gig for the SD card and phone storage, which is incorrect. Go keyboard, step one, choose go keyboard. Step two, switch to go keyboard. Click me to remove the ads. Nope. Downloads is downloads. Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Gmail, and local app. This is just to install applications then. Alrighty, well that's pretty much all of the applications that are on this phone then. So let's try gaming on this then. GTA 3. Here we go. Is it actually going to work? It works. Amazing. Did you see the battery life before I opened up this? It'll be dead in about three seconds. Okay, with everything on maximum, let's see how GTA 3 runs on the Goofone i6s. Can we actually play it? Can I actually see the Banshee? There's a Banshee. Where is he? There it is there. It's a bit laggy. Just just a little bit. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low. But my hands are all messed up. So you better try, brother. Mine too, man. Mine too. Well, uh... Oh. Get in, Claude. Oh. Okay. Alright, off we go. Oh, shit. Okay, yep. Single frames a second. Oh, no, it's fine now. Just gotta give us some time. There we go. Oh, the speaker. It's playable. I use the word playable very lightly. If you probably put it on, you know lower settings, then yes, you could likely play this completely fine, but uh, everything on high just pushes this phone to its absolute maximum. The iOS skin is taking up majority of the RAM on this, and the touchscreen's very iffy and just not really working. But anyways, that's GTA 3. At least you got to see it. There you see. You close it and everything's just like, what do I do? Well, I guess we all want to see the specs of this thing, so device info hardware, here it is here. It's going to show us that we have a 960 by 540 display, MediaTek MT6582, basically an MT6580, 4.2, which is fake 4.4.4. So they've made it look like iOS, then faked the Android version. Just agree with it. So we've got 512 meg of RAM and 16 gigs of flash storage. I think it's detecting my SD card. MediaTek MT6582, but it's a dual core? That 
doesn't seem correct. Should be a quad core. iPhone 6s, 6s, and 6s. Serial is the good old 01234567898 ABCDF as usual. Nothing changes there. 960 by 540 display. We'll do the screen test. It's definitely going to be two. Yeah. Two point multi touch. Good. 512 meg of RAM with 51% used, which is probably why GTA 3 was running a little bit slower than usual. The cameras reckon 6.2 megapixels and 6.2 megapixels. I don't think so. Batteries at 33%, and the profile is 1000 milliamp hours, which uh, is not far off, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the actual capacity. Thermal, uh, it's a bit warm in the CPU area, 40 degrees. Sensors, reckons it's got all of them, but I think we've got an accelerometer, and that's about it. Next one shows that we have an iPhone 6s with an MT6582, but the Android version is 4.4.4, but it's Jelly Bean, quad core, but two cores active. Maybe it's not an MT6582 then. I'm not too sure. Total internal memory, 271 megabytes. So I have a feeling 512 megabytes of internal storage this has. RAM is 512, so it's probably 512, 512. Screen, 4.6 inches, which is correct. 540 by 960. Battery is yes, and it's slowly dying. Thermal, something like that. Sensors, accelerometer. The other ones are fake, of course. Cameras, six megapixels and six megapixels. That's just not right. We're gonna be tearing it down soon, so we'll get a better look at the cameras. And we're already at 15% battery. <laughs> That's good. Well, the last application that we've got is secret codes. How many are gonna be displayed here? 19. Well, that's not too bad then. Engineer mode is most of them. Google services and settings. Oh, that's just there. I think this is where you do the IMEI stuff. I'm fairly sure of it. Mail? Okay, that's a different mail then. Home screen tips. Oh, that's the uh, default Android home screen tips thing. Yep, I know what that is. Google services, Google services, Google services, Google services, engineer mode. Oh, okay, we know where that's pinched from. Also, something I've seen is the P sensor. Why not laugh at it? Engineer mode, looks like that. Look how fast the battery's dying. <laughs> engineer mode, yep, engineer mode, same thing. What do these Bluetooth ones do? Do they do anything? An app wants to turn on Bluetooth. Deny. Calendar storage. Yep. Battery is dead. No secret codes to uh, change the boot logo or any settings like that. So that's pretty much all of this Goofone 6S has to offer. The battery life is absolutely terrible on this thing. An hour and a half have been recording for. And that was charged 100% and now it's dead. It looks like an iPhone if you glance at it. The display is not too bad. The build quality is... We'll get to build quality when we tear it down. The general functionality isn't too bad. It can play games, it can open the browser, it can do a couple of things, and that's about it before the battery will just die. Didn't have to power it off either. Is there any redeeming factors about this? Not really. It's just another Goo phone with images as applications. It's just a generic bare bones Android phone that they've shoved an iOS skin onto, put it in an iPhone 6S body, and called it a day. So I think what we should do is tear this down and have a better look at the innards, and then we can finally finish up having a look at Goo phones for the time being and move on to some other content. Because I'm pretty sure most of you have already seen enough of these Goo phones, and I can absolutely agree. I'm sick of seeing them. So take the two pantalobes out, and then basically the whole thing falls apart like so it is actually a 1000 milliamp hour battery in this i didn't quite take notice of it when i was putting the sd card in so how you're supposed to take this apart though right here where the mute switch is which by the way looks a little something like that good job there's two screws so one screw goes there and the other screw goes there this aluminium piece on the back is just clipped into place but that's meant to pop off first you undo the two screws and then the whole thing comes off so it's a bit sophisticated but it gives you access to the battery and this white sticker for no particular reason. So there you go. Of course, this can't be a goo phone without some good old lead. This piece of crap battery is in fact 1000 milliamp hours. Look how thin it is. Yep, while well, this lasted all but an hour and a half. Well done. Now we do have the rear camera. I didn't try the kill switch. I imagine the kill switch would do exactly what it's meant to do. But here is the eight megapixel camera, supposedly. There's a code on there, which I'm not too sure what that is, but I'll Google it and see if it comes up with anything. But I've also just realized that the front camera is on the same flex. So I would say these are pretty much the exact same cameras. Actually, if I do that, there you go. Yeah, the front one is smaller, obviously, to fit in that area, but I'd say they're the exact same sensors. But I'll Google the code and see if it comes up with anything. Okay, and lifting up the bottom piece be. The speaker is just this itty bitty tiny one just in there. That's why it was so quiet. Got the lightning port, the headphone jack, microphone, and the home button is right there. That's what the home button is, so 
clicky clicky. And the home button itself is this piece of plastic. It's like a mini CD right there. Looks kind of cute. The touch just pops off like so. Display ribbon comes off like that. There's a bit of tape over the coin style vibration motor wiring and we've got a bunch of screws to take out. Okay, I think with everything disconnected, this just all lifts away like so. We've got some exposed chips we can have a look at. But that's the metal frame there. And you can also see just in there around the home button, the touch area that goes around the display and then around the home button. And that's how Touch ID works. The SD card location is right here. It lays into the phone like so and it's right there. It doesn't pop out or anything, you have to actually take it out and do that, or do what I did and kind of lift the motherboard up that way and use some tweezers and just pull it out like so. Also, what is under this white stick? Oh, okay. That stick is holding down the, um, the power button, isn't it? Yes, it is. And some important circuitry, so I'll just put that back and we'll pretend we've never seen anything. Got the two LEDs there, though, which they did work. But the processor, my friends, is not an MT6582. It is an MT6571A. So that is a dual-core processor. So device info hardware and CPU system info got this wrong. That is something. Usually the CPU system info shows the right specifications, but nope. Instead, we've got an MT6571A and we've got a Samsung module just there, which I'm not too sure what that is, but I will Google that and display a little bit of text on screen to tell you what that's going to be. Uh, we do have some other chips around the motherboard, like that MediaTek one there, that MediaTek one there, uh, something there. The sticker on this motherboard says not a lot. Actually, there's two stickers there. What dodginess have they included here? I tried removing that sticker to see the one under it, but it's all just stuck together, unfortunately. But there you go, it's a T61803 motherboard. So that's the guts powering the Goofone 6S. In the original video I made for this, I don't even think that I discovered that it was a different MediaTek chip. I think I just went along with whatever it said in the applications. There you go, you learn something new every day. Well, I'll go ahead and put this back together and hopefully it still works. So I've just noticed a couple of unused connectors that are actually on this motherboard that I didn't see just before. Considering there's only one flex cable for the two cameras, there's an extra one there if they were to use a separate flex ribbon for one camera and then the other for that one. So that's a little bit of an interesting tidbit there. We'll stick the lead weight down just for the sake of it, I guess. There we go. So this is how it's supposed to be put back together. So that comes off like so. And then you just clip this down into place. Like that. And everything snappity snaps together. Then you put the first screw in like so. And then you grab the second one. And that goes in like that. And then now all you do is basically just line that up and clip it all back down. And that's it. It's back together, I think. Yeah. It's pretty good. And now if we see if it still works, I'll just plug in some power and it should show us a battery icon. Should. There you go. See, I didn't kill it. Good job. Okay, and the battery percentage is now at that, so we can just power it back on and I'm pretty sure everything will be fine. I'll display the full specifications of the Goofone i6s to the side here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. But yeah, this is a bit of a clusterfuck of a thing. MT6571 though, there you go. And I'm not too sure of the internal storage, but I'm gonna just assume it's 512 meg and the RAM is 512 meg. So nothing too spectacular here. It's on the same level as the Goofone i7 lower quality version, which was the most usable out of all the Goofones which is surprising but there you go we're back it works <laughs> open usb storage yep so what's the battery at now may i ask 33 percent. there you go fast charging right there that's that's good that is everything that i want to have a look at on this goo phone thing i can finally put it away now and after four years of owning this it still works which is amazing but i don't think i need to say much more about this it was just a very average clone to be fairly honest so that can just go back in the box then but that's it everyone that's all the goo phones that i want to look at for the time being as i said looking at these phones over and over again with minimal changes just really isn't that exciting i want to do some other content where i have a look at a really obscure nokia phone that i really want to demonstrate to you all and if i just focus on doing iphones every single video it's just the same thing and that's why the iphone clone month burnt me out so quickly was because it was just the same thing in a different shell over and over again and it's kind of like 
how many of them can you do in a row before you just get burnt out and what I got to 14 or 15 or something like that and that was it so four goo phones is all you're gonna get for now unfortunately I'm sorry but maybe in a year or so we might have a look at the 6 and a goo phone i5 that I've got working as well as a goo phone 4s but I'm not too sure when I'll get around to doing them though but anyways I hope you did enjoy this little iPhone attack of the clones special iPhone clone month spiritual successor thing I hope you got some entertainment I got a few laughs out of this but if you made it to the end of this video thank you very much for watching I do appreciate it as always and if you needed to use the timestamps that's all good that's why they're there or chapters they're over there somewhere if you're watching this on a PC system files and all that stuff's in the description below feel free to go through that tell me what you find if there's anything cool tell me where the IMEI has been pinched from and all that sort of good stuff and lastly I don't endorse the sales of any replica products it's just for entertainment and educational purposes only but apart from that my friends that's it we are done with goo phones thankfully stay tuned for the next video which should be the obscure Nokia that I want to have a look at it's a really oddball one that I want to go into a bit of a retrospective with so that'll be exciting to have a look at but I've got some other videos that I have planned before the start of May where I'm going to be taking a two-week break and then after my two-week break I come back and keep doing content I think hopefully we'll see how we go but anyways everyone thank you so much for watching this video I really do appreciate it and I hope you did enjoy this for what it was as always take care stay safe be good people and I'll see you all in the next video which should be what I've rambled on about for the last five minutes so until then I thank you all for watching once again I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you in the next one if you like this content feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video